write the vision, make it plain on tablets, that he may run who reads it. That's Habakkuk 2.22. And another scripture on this theme of vision that the Lord put on my heart. Proverbs 29.18. In the King James Version, it says, Without vision, the people perish. And then in the King, New King James, it says, where there is no revelation, the people cast off restraint. So write the vision that you may run. And without vision, the people perish. You know, I've really been meditating on this theme of just of vision, of spiritual vision, of you know, prophetic revelation and what that means when people do not have revelation for moving forward. And, you know, there's so many different stories in the Bible where the enemy comes against like the physical sight of people. And that is often, you know, the, the, the removing of the eyes or the threat to remove the eyes is, you know, it's a, it's a picture of what the enemy actually has been doing in the spirit, in the spirit realm with removing the vision of the people. And so, you know, without vision, people perish, picture yourself, you know, I mean, I thank God, thank God for my eyesight in the natural and that I can see that I can see depth, that I can see physically what is in front of me, but, but to be like blind Bartimaeus in the Bible who, you know, was blind, it was blind from, I think he was one who was blind from childbirth or, or any of the ones that Jesus healed their eyesight. Imagine what life would be like groping about in darkness and not being able to see where you're going. And yet, spiritually see, speaking, we have in a large part as the body of Christ allowed the enemy to steal away our vision and our sight in the spirit. And so we have been like a, like the blind groping around in darkness, spiritually speaking, not knowing where we're going. And you know, what does this look like? You know, what does this look like? I just want to say hello, Jacqueline. Hello, Lizzie Tozer. Good to see you ladies tonight. You know, and so we have to protect our vision. You know, and we can think of spiritual or naturally like our eyesight is so precious. And we wouldn't ever want to lose that. But I think we neglect in many ways our spiritual sight. And in that, that verse that I read in Proverbs 29, it says like without revelation or without prophetic revelation. It's like the vision, the revelation, the, the vision of where you're going. What is the direction that your life is pointed in? What is, you know, and the vision isn't just like, okay, you know, it's not just naturally what you want to do. Um, but it's like, what, what has God released? What has God spoken to you and shown you is like the vision, the original design and intention that he had for your life, the plans and the purposes, what, what is written on those scrolls in heaven about your life? You know, it says that every, every day, everything was written about us in the books of heaven, even before one of them came to being being. And so it's like understanding that God had, has plans and he has a destiny and he has a purpose for our life. But it's like we have to enter into that place of communion with him and into this place of, of, of positioning ourselves so that we can see, so that he can release to us those plans and those purposes and the strategies and the direction for forward movement. And you know, I really see that one of the one of the things that God is wanting to do in this season right now, one thing that he's really doing in the body of Christ is he's actually, um, I, I kind of see him as, I kind of see it as like us getting like a, a laser eye surgery in the spirit. It's like he's correcting, um, he's correcting where there has been a distortion in our, in our scene spiritually, where there has been um, an inability to see clearly and, and to, to focus in on the things that he would want us to focus in on. And I really see him like he's been bringing us into this place of like rest and retreat. And it's not because we're, we're, we're moving backwards away from the enemy, but it's a retreat 
out of the, the, the fog of confusion in a retreat into him, in a retreat into intimacy. And in this place of retreating into him and in this place, there is like he, he is correcting the vision and there is this clarity that is opening up. There's a clarity that is just opening up. And it's an ability to see in the distance, to see far beyond, like, like the times and the seasons, to see not just the few steps that are in front of you. You know, I think there are some of you guys who have felt like, okay, like I know what I'm supposed to do now, like this week, this month, but I don't know what next year or two years or five years, there's been kind of like this, this block and it's felt like you've been like living your life just from like, like week to week, kind of in like a bit of a survival mode because you haven't known what your purpose is and what the plan is. And so I see the Lord pulling us back into himself so that he can bring these corrections so that we can see clearly to move forward into, you know, what he has, you know, and um, one of the stories that I was reading, cause I'm, I'm just on my read through the Bible. I, I do this every once in a while. And, um, I was reading this week in 1 Samuel. There's actually one story. It's 1 Samuel chapter 11, that, and it has to do with this theme of vision, and it really spoke to me. And it's about Saul. So it's one of the good stories about Saul. We know he didn't end very well, but, you know, it's after Saul got anointed. So Saul got anointed by king as king by Samuel but then he didn't step up into the place you know he didn't step up and act as a king to the people you know and so he just went back to he went back to his family he went back to the thing that he was doing before you know in the tribe of Benjamin but it wasn't until in chapter 11 the Ammonites come against the people of Jabesh Gilead and they come against these you know and it's part of the tribe of Israel and and so this this um what's his name Nahash the Ammonite he comes against the people and he and, and they say okay we'll surrender to you and he says okay if you're going to surrender to me you have to let me I'm going to take out every one of your your right eye you know it would be like he wanted to shame them and to take their vision you know and and so it's if no one's going to save you you know you can surrender to me and I'm going to take out your eye you know, and so this picture was when the message went out and they said, okay, give us time to see if someone will rescue us. And if not, you know, we will come and we will allow you to execute, you know, this judgment and to take out our, our eyes, you know, and it was super, I mean, what a horrible, horrible thing. But I really felt like the Lord was showing me that this has actually been the, stra the enemy's strategy, what he has been doing. And then God is restoring it. But what this provoked in Saul, and this is where I actually, I, I relate to Saul in this, you know, and so when Saul got this message and Saul was told like, yes, you know, they've come against this, this town, this city of people, and the enemy's going to take out their eyes and this indignation rose up in Saul. And, you know, and it says the spirit of God came upon Saul when he got this news and he was greatly angered like his anger was aroused and there was just this this fierceness that rose up in him and it was the first time that he stepped into his kingly position and his anointing when he realized what the enemy was going to do to the people and he said not on my watch he said not on my watch and he stepped up and he made a plan and he well he threatened all the Israelites he was like you're gonna come out and you're gonna fight you know, and so he gathered and rallied the people, you know, but there is this thing, there is this indignation and I feel it like God is wanting, you know, so I mean, God loves all of the fivefold have different purposes. We all have different purposes in the body of Christ, but the prophets are often knows is known as like the eyes, the sight. And, you know, Canada as a nation has had such limited prophetic revelation. And because of our, you know, our religious system, the religious spirits, the institutionalization, the tall poppy syndrome and the cutting down of those who try to rise up and all these things that historically have, have been working, you know, against the real empowering of the body of Christ. You know, Canada has been... Um, 
in some ways, um, very immature in her vision and has lacked vision and has not yet come to um, a full maturity. But I see that this is part of what God is wanting to do. And, you know, I just talked about that, like spiritual, like laser eye surgery, like he is correcting. He There is this place of correcting the vision, the vision of us you know, individually, but also even as a nation and correcting us so that we can get back to this place of what is our assignment as a nation? What is the call? What is the call? And it's almost like, you know, it's, it's like, you know, the, the, where has been our impact? Where has been our, our, our purpose as a church and, and just really being, we're not known. Canada has not been known as a powerful church. Canada has not been known as a powerful voice. Canada has not been known in a lot of ways as a leader, but this is shifting because God is restoring us, you know, and it's that Revelation 22 two is a scripture and it's prophesied over this nation can't you know it says the leaves of the tree are for the healing of nations and canada is the only nation that has a leaf on its flag and that leaf symbolizes a healing to the nation just like the leaves the leaves of plants the leaves of of you know things that i i'm i'm an essential oil enthusiast so just as we get medicines from leaves and plants, things that heal our body, that can restore and reset. God has put these healing medicines in leaves. So God has put like a healing salve within the church in Canada to be as healing to the nations. And so he is restoring our vision and he is bringing that correction and bringing us back to a place, you know, but one thing he's doing is he's raising up people. So I, I am, I am, um, resonating with Saul in this chapter of, you know, first of first Samuel 11, because this is where the indignation caused him to rise up and take his place and say, no more. I will step into my kingly anointing and I will defend the people. And I feel this burning and the Lord is wanting for the prophetic, for the prophets to rise up, to rise up with this indignation, looking at the people in this nation and saying, where is your vision? Where is your vision and your direction? And why has the enemy been allowed to blind and to steal the vision and the direction from the people for so long? And so there is a remnant and there is a powerful people that are rising up. And those of us who are equippers, who are rising up and we are going to restore back to the people the vision because that Proverbs 19, sorry, it was 20, 29, 18, where it says, without prophetic revelation without prophetic revelation the people perish or the people cast off restraint so without revelation without prophetic understanding of where you're called to and where you're going you cannot walk out your destiny you cannot walk on a path that you cannot see faith is not doing something in blindness but faith is actually seen in the spirit and seeing something that is substance Faith is substance. Faith is believing in things that are unseen in the natural. But God is restoring vision to his people. And he has called me to be a restorer of people's vision. And this is what I love about the prophetic. And so this isn't, I'm saying me is, this is my call. This is my passion. But I, I'm raising up a prophetic company, a whole bunch of people who are also like, you know, having this heart to really see a shift and a change. You know, but prophetic revelation, so it's not just for the prophets, not just for the prophets. We all need prophetic revelation. And so this is why the prophetic, it's not just about, it's not just about getting words and giving people words and like being a mouthpiece for God. It's not just about prophesying over people, though that is part of it. There's that encouragement, comfort, and exhortation, but it is this revelation that is like the vision that people need. They need that vision to be able to, to tie their faith to it so that they can walk out their prophetic destiny because without that vision in the direction, it's like, it's like going, 
It's like, you know, I'm going on a trip across country in a couple months. It'd be like me going on this trip without my, without my GPS, without my phone, without my maps, going, you know, drive, you know, flying out to another province that I've never been to and just like expecting that I'm going to be able to get to my destination without actually being able to see the map and the road and the plan and where I need to go. But that is how we've been living our life. That's how we've been living our life. But no more. No more. We're not. <laughs> we're not buying into this, this, um, this temporal way of living anymore that just says, you know, learn a skill, get a job, invest, get a pension, enjoy a few years before you die, and then it's all over. You know, it's so much more than that. It's not just this like live for temporal needs, temporal like needs and concerns and just to live a comfortable life and to move on. We have a vision that goes far beyond this world. It goes on into eternity. This life, this life that the enemy would like to like see us waste by taking out our sight. This life is meant to be lived with an eternal purpose. This life is a stewardship and everything that we do in this life is an investment is, is like, you know, it's like, we're going to be tested. We're going to find ourselves before the Lord. If for those of us who, you know, have accepted Jesus as our savior, you will find yourself before the judgment seat of Christ. And we will be, you know, we're saved by the blood of the lamb, but we're going to give an account for what we did with the things that the Lord put in our hand. And so what did we do with this time? What did we do with this life? What did we do? How did we impact? How did we make a difference in this world? You know, and so it's time for restoring of the vision. I just want to give a shout out to a few of you guys. Hello, Angela Holloma, Julie Sondergaard, Debbie Shakespeare, Kara Welk, Aaron Walker, Amanda Beckford, Alexis, Del Castillo. Good to see you guys. So good to see some of my students on here and Lizzie as well. Yeah, so vision, vision, vision is so important. Vision is so important. And you know what I love? I love about the prophetic and I love about prophesying, especially over someone who's not really familiar with the prophetic. It's like when you meet someone and you realize, you know, you, you look at them and you can see their potential. You can see the beauty of what God has put inside of them. You can see where God would like to take them, but you can also see that they actually have no idea. And it's such a privilege to be able to look to the father, just as it said, Jesus looked to the father. He only said what he heard his father say. He only did what he saw his father do. And it's like, we get to look past the person who's in front of us and we get to look to the father and say, father, what is your plans and purposes for this precious one who's in front of you? And it's like, he releases that to us and we get to speak it over them because it's like without that vision, without the speaking of the word, we actually get to create a pathway forward for them. And it's kind of like someone who's like, you know, I talked about going on a trip without my maps. It's like going, you know, it's like I get to hand them the map. Like, hey, this is your map. Like, this is, this is a pathway forward that God has for you. And it's, it's so beautiful. It's so beautiful. You know, and so we need to protect our vision. We need to steward the revelation that God has given us. And guys... I think this is actually, it's not biblical, but I think it's a Helen Keller quote. I think she said, I think it was her who said, do not doubt in the dark what God told you in the light. So do not doubt in seasons of darkness what God has shown you and revealed to you in seasons of light. You know, when someone, uh, I can't remember who was, made a comment earlier about, I think it was Diane Wallace, about like the COVID, the, you know, after this season of COVID, COVID and this, this sense of like lack of vision, you know, and I think really what this, for the years, those three, this 20, 
2020 to 2022, it was a real season of, you know, it, it, it almost seemed like our vision was taken. There were things that we believed for. I know for me personally, I guess I'll just speak to my, about my own situation. Like I was so believing for revival and for this great, you know, these incredible things to happen and for things to start opening up. I had just, you know, I had done some great like networking, like ministry, and I felt like things were coming together and like things were just falling into place. And then it was like, and then COVID happened and things got shut down and it was like this deep darkness came and it just covered, you know, and it just seemed to cover the earth. And it was like, you know, more than, you know, more than a physical disease, it like it was spiritual. And there was, you know, there were principalities that were connected with it. And there was just this weight and this heaviness. And I'm sure it, it shifted from different regions. But here in Canada, it was such a time of just um, of darkness and heaviness, you know, and in that time, it was so hard to look and to to you know, it was like there was this, it was like that, you know, it talks about Saul. I was talking about in First Samuel 11, how he was so enraged, like the enemy was stealing the vision of the people. And it felt like that because it just seemed like this blindness was coming over, you know, over the eyes of the people, over, you know, some people in the church, you know, all of us, we got, I'm, I'm sure, you know, no one walked through the season perfectly in one way or another. You know, there's areas where, you know, we didn't know which way was up or down, right or left. And it's just like, we didn't even know what to believe or who was our enemy. But it was that thing of, it was like stealing our sight, our vision, our clarity. And there was just so much confusion. You know, and so we found ourselves reeling in darkness. You know, it's, it's the Isaiah 60, I, I that chapter Isaiah 60, like, you know, it says, I think it's verse you know, I'm going to turn to it, Isaiah 60, so I don't misquote it, because I think it's verse 4, where it says, no, verse 2, it says, behold, deep darkness will cover the earth, deep darkness the people, but the Lord will arise over you, and the Lord will arise over you, his glory will be seen upon you, yeah, Christine, rise and shine, rise and shine. And so God is restoring the vision to his people. And he is pulling us back to retreat into him. And in the place of retreat into him, there is a dispelling of the cloud of confusion that has prevented us from moving forward. And there is this place of retreat in him where he is correcting our vision so we can see things in a way that we have never seen. There is a, 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 a longevity. There is a long distance vision. There is He is releasing the, the plans and the strategies and I just see him releasing vision like long term like so long term because there are some of you that need to know beyond what this next six or 12 months are gonna be for you because you need that long-term vision to be sustained through this journey that the Lord is taking you on it's very much like Joseph you know um you know, not that I want to prophesy Joseph's whole journey over you, but, you know, Joseph was given the dream of greatness that would take him from his teenage years to eventually getting him into that place of, you know, of the palace and of the, the like being with the Pharaoh and, and saving the people. Like there was a vision. God gave this great vision in this call and put this dream in his spirit so that he would be able to be sustained. And I see the Lord is releasing. It's that level you know, it's that level of revelation. It's that the Habakkuk 2, the Habakkuk 2.2, 2, write the vision, write the vision and make it plain that you may run. And I just feel this urgency. If you don't have a vision, you need to step back and retreat into the Lord and get your vision because otherwise we are groping around in darkness and we don't know which direction we should go. We need to retreat in him and get the vision. 
you know, back to, so Proverbs 29, 18, without prophetic vision, without revelation, the people cast off restraint. You know, you can always think, how does that connect with physical vision? Samson, there's that story of Samson in the Bible. And I did not write down the chapter in which that is found. So I got my notes on all the other scriptures, but Samson, what happened to him? Samson, he was anointed. He was powerful. You know, just like the, the spirit came, a, came on Saul when he stepped up as king. The spirit was on Samson. He was, you know, he's able to kill thousands of people to take out the enemy. He had power to overcome. He could rip a lion apart with his hands. But Samson, Samson lost his vision. He lost his vision and it was his downfall. And it was the end of him. It was the end of his life. He, he spent his last time, times, the last years as a prisoner with no eyesight. He could not see anything. And why did he lose his eyesight? Why did he lose his vision? Because he took the anointing and the gift that God had given him. He took it for granted. And he traded it because he was more concerned with the lust of the world and, and his passion for women and his and immorality. And so because he chose impurity rather than the fear of the Lord and to reverence the spirit and the anointing that God had given him, but he chose impurity and it cost him his vision and it cost him his life. Yeah. Let the like fear of the Lord. Guys, we have to fear the Lord. Let the spirit of the fear of the Lord. And don't get me wrong, God is good. God is so good. He is so good. He is so good. He is love but he's also holy and he has a standard. But we're so privileged. We're so privileged. Because God is righteous. And we don't have to try and be righteous. We don't have to do righteousness. We are righteous in him. He has made us. He is transformed us. You know, Jesus died so that he, he died and he rose again so that he would be the firstborn of a new creation. He erased what Adam did. If you accept the, that price that he paid, if you accept his sacrifice on the cross and that blood, if you allow it to be applied to yourself, he wrote, he rewrote your story. You're no longer, no longer as Adam prone to sin. But no, now Jesus, firstborn of a new creation. He was the last Adam. We're Jesus' brothers and sisters, new creation in his image. As Jesus was, so are we in this world. He came to live and show us how Jesus laid aside his divinity. He always referred to himself as the son of man, not the son of God, because he laid that aside because he wanted to show us how we can live when we have this connection with the father. And he showed us what is possible. He showed us what's possible for us, guys. And when we fix our eyes on heaven and we allow God to correct our vision, you know, vision... I've talked a lot about like, you know, our plans, you know, vision for our future, the way forward, like what is our destiny? What is the call that God has for us? And that is like really, that's really important, really precious. But another part of the vision that he is correcting as well is like the vision, the vision of like when you gaze on yourself, spiritually speaking, in a mirror, when you look at yourself, 
when you look at yourself, do you see yourself still as a sinner or do you see yourself as a reflection of God's glory? Because you need to see yourself as you are. You need to see God as he is and yourself as you are because these are the two things that are going to determine everything that we do and we say and how we live our life because we will live out our own beliefs. As a man thinks in his heart, so is he. So as you think in your heart, so are you. And it doesn't matter, you know, what you say, if you say the right words, if you have the correct affirmations and you say all the right things, you know, if you don't believe in your heart, the truth of the finished work of the cross and that that is who you are and that has been finished for you, then you won't live out of it. Who? Yeah, I just want to say hello to a few of you guys. Thanks for tuning in. Hello, Lindsay Henderson, James Matthews, Robert Helms, Joanna Tully, Ella Ware. Good to see you guys. Thanks for tuning in. But guys, let the Lord, who? <laughs> you know, I'm just going to pray over you guys. Yeah, yeah. You know what? Even right now, as you like listen to this, and those who will receive this word and partner in faith with it and will say in their hearts, yes, God, I want my vision corrected. Yes, God, I want to see farther. Lord, yes, I want to see in the spirit. Yes, I need, you know, prophetic revelation so that I can walk in your ways. Those, you know, I see even now, just like release the, the scales from your eyes the scales to fall spiritually from the eyes. There is scales that are falling from your eyes and there is a fresh wind of the Holy Spirit that is blowing. And I just see the wind blowing around you even now. And where there is felt that there has been this fog of confusion and you felt like you've been looking forward and trying to turn on your high beams, but the fog has been so thick. Even right now, the wind is blowing and it's blowing, it's blowing out that fog and that confusion that has hindered you from seeing in the distance. Yeah. God is, whew, he is restoring and he is unlocking and he is unlocking your spiritual eyesight. He is restoring spiritual gifts and seeing gifts that had been shut down in a past season, either by disbelief or by um, um, like an inability to steward the things, you know, that we were seeing. Yeah. An increased sensitivity to the Holy Spirit. Receive it. Receive it. And know that many more are those who are for you than those who are against you. <sighs> Pay attention to the angels. Because they're there. Heaven is waiting. Heaven is trying to get your attention. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. So good. <laughs> I'm getting hot. I don't know if anybody else is getting hot. But I am getting very, very hot. Yes. Amen, Ella. Let it be. Let it be. Receive your vision. You know, Angela Holima. Angela. <laughs> wow. Angela, this word is so for you. And I just see that, man, the Lord has so awakened you. And it's like, I just see that he's, he's so lifting, he's lifted you up to see from a different height. And I just see him positioning you in this higher place. Yeah, my hands are tingly too. <laughs> Angela, he's lifted you up. And he's restoring to you in this season 
a sense of greatness that got lost somewhere in, in the journey, that sense of greatness that somehow got pushed aside and he's restoring it to you and he's started to really provoke and to awaken on the inside of you the possibilities of, of who you are and what is possible for you. And he is raising you up in this season and he is putting he is he's he's putting new armor on you and he's gonna show you how to war in the spirit in a new way and it's a way that is there's there's just such a grace for you and such an ease and I see you being like a skilled marksman in the spirit. The Lord is himself is training you and he's speaking to you. You're hearing him. You hear him more clearly than 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 you than you thought you did in the past and i just see that it is increasing the increasing your vision but also there's an increasing in your confidence and in your voice and i see the lord releasing you know like you re you releasing words i see them coming like a sword out of your mouth and they're words that are life but they are also cutting so it's like they're cutting people free of things that have held them back and they're launching people into the next you're such an encourager you are someone who wants to always build and to lift up and i just see you coming along and you're really you're i just see this ministry of reaching down and pulling up and putting people on their feet and reaching down and putting them on on their feet and i just see you like you know but there's just a real deep humility um in the way that you walk and the way that you serve and the way that you minister and you know god is just he's unlocking you and i just see this impenetrable armor that is covering you yeah he's a really yeah i just he's so it's like there's it, it's so like tailor-made so well fit there's no spaces there's no gaps there's nowhere you know for that for the enemy to be able to to get like the achilles heel so to speak yeah and i just see you being one who's able to take territory I see you taking territory and I see you working in stealth mode and I just see you because you are, you know, you're, you're humble, humble and quiet. You can be quiet and unassuming. You can also be loud if you need to be loud and God's going to bring that out more, but it's like you are going to be able to like just humbly get into places and just sneakily kind of come in and move in and, and be able to bring life in places where there were just you know, where it was just so dry. And it's almost like I'm seeing like reminded of David's, uh, David's men who, when David was hiding out in the cave and he's like, oh, I want to drink from the well. I want to drink from the well. It's like his, his mighty men went out and they got that cup of water from the well to feed the king, to, to give to the king. And I just see you being like, like the mighty woman who is able to go in and to get that, which refreshes and that, and I see that it's like a refreshing even to kings. And I believe that's speaking to the, the Lord is going to open up even places of influence for you, like places where you're going to be able to speak into people of, of position and people of authority, and you're going to be able to bring refreshing to them. Yeah. Yeah. And he's increasing your expectation. He's increasing your expectation of him, but your expectation of what is possible for you as well. Hello, Anatin, Gloria Narija, Josie Lavoy, Mary Lee, hello, Mickey LaFan, Jay Clark, Sydney Smithberry. Guys, thanks so much for tuning. Kara Welk. Awesome. So I made an executive decision this week. And uh, you know, I'm a solopreneur entrepreneur, so I can make executive decisions without, you know, consulting anyone. <laughs> So I decided to, I had my promo for the prophetic mentorship group that I was running until Valentine's Day of 444 uh, discount. Usually people will join the mentorship for $500 for six months. But uh, I just decided that I'm going to extend the 444 until the end of February. My, you know, and why the end of February? My birthday generally is on the last day of February, except this year, because it's a leap year. But uh, so... My birthday is February 28th, but 
I'll extend it to the 29th. So I was like, you know, I'm just going to extend it because I really believe that there are a few people out there who are sitting on the fence and need to hop off the fence. And, um, you know, and why, why would you want to join prophetic mentorship? Why would you want to be part of this group? Why would you want to grow in hearing God's voice? Why would you want to be part of a prophetic company? And it comes back to this issue, this thing of vision, without vision, without vision, without prophetic revelation, do you know where you're going? Do you feel like you hear the voice of God with clarity? Are you happy with your level of intimacy or do you want to go deeper? I love training people in the prophetic and not just prophets. I do run the Emerging Prophets Ontario School, but this is different. The prophetic mentorship group, we meet Monday evenings from 7 to 9 p.m. Eastern time. And this is for anyone and everyone. So whether you're a teacher, a pastor, a prophet, apostle, or just, you know, a, any lover of Jesus, like you are so welcome. We learn about just foundations, you know, new covenant foundations and how to grow in the prophetic, what does the prophetic look like in the new covenant? How can we develop our gifts? But also laying really strong foundations because, you know, there is so much, you know, there is, there's so much out there for spiritually minded people that is like outside of Christ. And for so long, the church has not had an answer for people who have been um, prophetic, have been seers, have discerned things, have had just really strong spiritual gifting. And for so long, there has not been a place. There hasn't been a place for them. There hasn't been training. There hasn't been understanding. You know, I didn't know about the prophetic. I didn't hear about it until I only discovered like now, like in my thirties, well, I'm past 30 now, but in my thirties, like in the last decade, that the prophetic was even a thing and that I was called to it, you know? And so it's like, even though I grew up in church and I grew up in Sunday school, I was saved from a young age, but I didn't, well, I didn't know women could be in ministry and I didn't know that there were still prophets. I didn't know about prophecy and that speaking in tongues and, and gifts of healing and all of those things are still for the church today, you know? And so what has happened to a lot of these people who haven't had you know, the, the church hasn't had answers for them. So they've looked out there because they know, okay, maybe they see things in the spirit. Maybe they can sense the demonic or they, you know, or they see angels, but you know, they've kind of made, been made to feel, some people have made to, been made to feel like witches because the church has not had answers for them or haven't had the people, haven't had prophets put in place to be able to train up and to equip people into understanding these things and how to access the spirit realm through the only permissible access point, which is Jesus. John 15, it talks about Jesus is the good shepherd and Jesus is the door. He is the door. He is the access point into the spirit realm. You know, there are other ways that we can get into the spirit realm, but if you play with that, you know, don't play with fire and not expect to be burned because Jesus is the only permissible way. Any other way in is playing the in the enemy's territory. And once we step into his territory, we give him legal right and permission to, you know, in our life. And so unless you don't want to be handed over to the tormentors, you do not need to trade your soul for spiritual information. You know, look at, I was just reading the life of Saul and reading of the death of Saul. I taught, you know, I talked about, he had a, that good start where he got anointed and he was like, yes, I'm going to fight for the people. And, you know, the spirit of God came on him and changed him into another person. But, you know, at the end of his life, like, he was wiped out and his sons were wiped out because he disobeyed the Lord. And not only did he disobey the Lord with pertains to offering the, you know, the sacrifice when Samuel told him to wait, but he also consulted mediums and he went to, con to, to a witch to conjure up the dead to get information. So instead of going to the prophet of the Lord or accessing, you know, to speak to God himself, he went in through another way. And so there's lots of people out there who are promoting, yes, yes, psychic hotlines, you know, there's psychic hotlines, spirit, spiritists, there's, you know, witches, people do seances, 
you know, mediums. I even seen posts of people who so-called Christians on Facebook who, who are like, oh yeah, you know, I, I went to this medium so that I could talk to my dead dog, like things like that. It's like there's craziness out there. And God is just saying, he's like, I'm here, come to me. Come to me. And he's standing here with arms wide open and he talks. He loves to talk. He doesn't just talk to the prophets, but he loves to speak and he loves to lead us and guide us. But this is a thing of, you know, positioning ourselves in a place, you know. And so if you have a thriving like relationship with him, that's amazing. Like just keep pressing in. You know, some of you guys do have thriving relationships with him and you're in amazing churches and you're well supported or you're part of emerging prophets like Lynn Reinhart, myself, you know, some of you others on here, Laura Hatford, you know, and we're part of great like communities where we're getting equipped. But, you know, some of you just feel like I'm maybe you don't have any vision for your life past your retirement or anything beyond just making sure you have enough money to pay your mortgage and still be able to afford your groceries. You know, but there is something more than that. There is destiny and purpose and God has you know, eternal impact for each and every one of us. And it looks different. It looks different for all of us. But you want to find your place. You want to find your place. And yes, Angela, like you can read in the prophets, like in Hosea there, like God is longing. He's longing for his people. He's longing for us to come into a deeper place of intimacy. He's longing for us to just draw near to him. And so like, if you're, I was talking about that, if you're lacking vision, if you can't see where you're supposed to go, if you can't see what is the greater purpose, what is the internal impact that the Lord designed for you to have because you're stewarding this life, it is not for nothing. It is, think of this life as like a test and a stewardship that is gonna determine your positioning and for, for all of eternity. And I'm not saying we earn our salvation because we do not. You get into heaven by accepting Jesus, shed blood on the cross, end of story. So that's not what I'm saying. But there are rewards and positions and it says that those who are faithful will rule with him, will reign with him. And so can he trust you? Do you have vision? So first of all, pull yourself into him. Go deeper and deeper into him. But, you know, this is, the Bible says it's not good for a man to be alone. So, you know, we need God, yes, first and foremost, but we also need community and we need connection. So if you are not in a place of community and connection and you're not feeling like you're thriving in the prophetic or in your relationship with God, consider joining a thriving, beautiful community, which is the prophetic mentorship group that I run on Mondays. So... Till the end of February, I'm going to keep the discount on of 444 because I would really like to see a few more people come and join us. All right, guys, thanks so much for tuning in. Have a lovely Saturday. I really love and appreciate you guys so much. Thanks so much. Have a great night.